With less than 40 million people living here, it's bigger than the entire European Union, 33 times bigger than Italy and 15 times bigger than France, more than 30% larger than Australia, 5 times as big as Mexico, 3 times as big as India, and about the same size as 81,975 Disney Worlds put together. Oh, Canada, what a country! And with all that space comes lots of room to explore, and that means some unexpected findings, as you're about to see. 15 Unsettling Discoveries in Canada That No One Can Explain Human Foot Beach Ten toes had never been so creepy. Well, in this case, we mean 130 toes. That's because 13 human feet washed up on a U.S. coast. This takes the term footloose to a whole new level. We should add that not all 13 feet are washed up at the same time, even though just one is pretty terrifying to find. But no, the 13 human feet had washed up on shore for years since 2007. It was mainly beachgoers who made the discovery. Usually on the beach, you find some litter like a bottle or a maybe a shoe. But these beachgoers came upon actual human feet. We might add that there were some socks and shoes attached. One person even found an entire shin bone. This discovery was occurring on the Salish Sea. The first two feet had belonged to the same corpse and unfortunately were found by a young little girl nearby. Another foot was discovered by a dog walker. Thanks to their Rottweiler, the feet were found. This sounds like the work of a terrible serial killer, but the explanation might be simpler. The coroner who handled most of the cases believes that the crustaceans in the water are just lazy. Now the bodies themselves come from people who either met terrible accidents or took their own lives. The crustaceans first feed on the parts of the body that are easily accessible. A foot that's in a shoe is hard to get to. Therefore, the shoes wash up on the shore. It's not the most appetizing thing to think about, but that's the explanation. We're probably all lucky that we weren't the ones that found the feet. Or better yet, we're lucky we're not the ones who lost the feet. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. In Trout River, Newfoundland, the locals here really had a whale of a problem. But really, what they captured in Canada shocked the world. A tiny Canadian town had to figure out how to dispose of this 81-foot-long whale carcass that washed up on the beach. The blue whale is one of several of the endangered species that were spotted floating off the coast recently. But no one expected to find this on the beach. The one that beached belly up here in Trout River, a tourist town with 650 residents, pretty quickly began to give off an odor. The smell was because the carcass was bloated with methane gas, caused by decomposition. If the whale's body becomes too stressed, it could have actually exploded, spewing whale guts everywhere. It could have become a healthy hazard too, and local and federal authorities disagreed over who was responsible for the whale's disposal. So a team from the Royal Ontario Museum arrived to take ownership of the blue whale carcass. The carcass was officially towed out of town, and this was no simple task. Blue whales are estimated to weigh between 100 and 150 tons. Researchers preserved the whale skeleton and collected tissue samples from the massive marine mammal. Underground Asylum Tunnels No matter where you go in the world, you'll always come across a spooky building. And those spooky buildings are usually the center of different types of rumors and backstories. Most of them aren't true, but they keep people interested. And then sometimes some places have a grim history. And no matter how you try to escape it, it always seems to get longer. This is the case for a sanatorium in Canada. When you take a look at it, it looks like something right out of a Stephen King movie. Now we should add that the sanatorium, it's no longer in operation. It just sits there, looking ominous. According to the records from the Kamloops Museum and Archives, the place had been built in 1907 for patients that had tuberculosis. It continued its operation in 1958. And then after that, it was transformed into a mental health services branch. It was run by the government at this point. And then in 1983, it closed down and started to take on the look that it is today. Of course, when any building is uninhabited, it tends to fall to the wayside. But that fact doesn't make this any less spooky. People who have been around the building have reported feelings of penetrating eeriness, and it doesn't help that multiple buildings at the site have tunnels that connect. Some have even said that they hear a mother crying for a child. But don't worry, it sounds like it's coming from the 8th floor high up. 
so you have some time to run away if you hear it yourself. Walking trees. The trees are walking away, literally. Now we're not going to try to jump to the conclusion on this because the explanation is still up in the air. But as you can see from the video, these trees just left where they were. They look like they're trying to go catch a bus or something. And no one in the comment section seems to be trying to figure out what happened or what the explanation is. It could be anything. Could it be some sort of piece of equipment that's moving these trees? Or could it be a giant animal that ripped them from the ground, just decided to take them with them? Whoever was filming the video didn't get too close. As you can see, the video was filmed from a good distance. But because of that, you're able to get a clear picture of the trees walking away. I guess there's nothing wrong with assuming that these trees came to life and just wanted to leave. But that doesn't seem too plausible. There must be an explanation for it. But we don't have it. We'll leave it to you. What do you think it could be? Leave your answers in the comments below. <laughs> St. Louis Ghost Train Maybe those walking trees were trying to catch the ghost train because we know we're not trying to catch it. That's right, a ghost train in the city of St. Louis in Saskatchewan. We'll explain. They also call it the St. Louis Light. What it is is an odd event that takes place on a bend where train tracks have long since been removed. There have been reports of this light glowing through the darkness along the abandoned bend and it's left many who have seen it scratching their heads. Now it's only been said to have lasted a few seconds, maybe an hour, but it's still a crazy sight to behold. So what people are reporting instead is they see their small lights around the general area or lights followed by a second red one. The rumors that the red light is followed by a strange reaction from wildlife. There was a rumor that the light could be photographed for video, but luckily they had been debunked. So what's causing this strange light? A lot of people have come up with their own stories. Some people believe that it's a worker with a lantern who's searching for its head. No one truly knows and it's still up in the air in terms of what it is. Ogopogo. It's the story of Ogopogo. What it is exactly, we're going to take a trip to Kelowna to find out. This goes back to the First Nation people and there's a spirit in their lake. Now the story is about this spirited lake that's changed over time. This goes all the way back to when European settlers arrived. Now what's spooky about this lake is that the spirit can manifest into a creature. And the stories begin where people say that they have spotted it. What does it look like? The descriptions all change. It all depends on who you ask. Some people say that he's green with a snake-like body. Any averages around 25 meters long. Others say that the head kind of looks like a horse. And of course, others say that it looks reptilian. Unfortunately, there are no photos of it, which leaves the truth of the story up in the air. But with so many people saying that they've claimed to see it, there might be some truth to it. Are you adventurous to go there and find out for yourself? If you do, take a photo. It'll be the first one. <laughs> Dead Gopher Museum Anyone rarely wants to look at a dead animal. We've all been guilty of driving by something on the road and not taking the risk to look at it. And then on the other hand, some museums feature dead animals. More specifically, the Dead Gopher Museum. It's just what it sounds like. We can't sugarcoat it, but don't worry, it's not as gruesome as it sounds. It's a bunch of gophers dressed up in different situations, creating different scenes across the museum. They're stuffed and posed in a way to look cute. Opening in 1996, the Torrington Gopher Hole Museum featured dozens of these stuffed gophers, and their poets picked the history and daily life of the town. Now, they're not gophers, they're Richardson's ground squirrels, and they're featured in 50 tiny, elaborately painted dioramas. What can you expect? Some of them are dressed as fishermen, firefighters, and even the population of the town is around 200 people but it's still got an interesting enough history to where you can pose a few gophers and make your museum out of it. So if you like history, and if you like gophers helping you understand that history, then this might be the museum for you. Oak Island Money Pit. It's been a mystery for the ages. There are a few times in life where there's a mystery that sounds like it could come from a novel, 
But this is the case when it comes to the Oak Island Money Pit. It's dubbed the last great mystery. Found off the shores of Nova Scotia along Canada's Atlantic coast, this island is among 360 around Mahone Bay. At first glance, the 140-acre location seems like it would be like any other place. You have your grass and you have your sand, and it's not much to see. But in all reality, this place has a lot of history and even has a little bit of tragedy to it. It all started in the summer of 1795 when a boy and his friend made an astonishing discovery. They found a dirt depression and decided to investigate it. At first, they found a layer of composed rotting wood timbers. The timber has recovered the width of the hole, and together they formed a wooden platform. The boy and his friends moved the wood out of the way and started to tunnel down approximately 20 feet. They came across another level of wood timbers. Of course, they moved those out of the way too. No matter what barrier was ahead of them, they moved it. It took weeks to uncover what was in its hole. The boys had to bring back pickaxes and shovels. Unfortunately for them, they never found the treasure. And since then, no one has found the supposed treasure, although there seems to be many clues that there's something there on the island. The effort continues. There's been countless books and owners and the island to try and uncover whatever the initial hole had been hiding. Will anyone ever find the treasure? It doesn't seem all that likely, but you never know. Mick Barge It's not only the McRib that had a lot of popularity over the years. There's been countless McDonald's products and foods that have made waves in the fast food industry. Speaking of waves, did you know there was a McDonald's that was floating on the water? We're not pulling your McRib on this one. It's known as McBarge, and although it's no longer in existence, it was the first of its kind. You could order a burger, more specifically a Big Mac, while floating on the water. It was located in Vancouver, and it was world famous at one point. It was constructed and opened for the 1986 World Expedition of Transportation and Communication. The barge had been plopped in Falls Creek and didn't stray away from the usual McDonald's format. It was just like any other chain. The only difference was that it was floating on the water. Now that's a cool concept. We assume that Ronald McDonald never fell in the water to mess up that makeup, but unfortunately in the year 1986, the floating restaurant had fallen into disuse. The only time that it went back into business was to film for Blade Trinity. Either way, it was a pretty cool concept. You can probably place your bets that someone got a little seasick while eating there. <laughs> Sour Toe Cocktail Nowadays, they don't make drinks the way they used to. Today's drinks don't come with human toes in them. You probably thought we were going to make a joke about how today's drinks are a little bit lighter than they used to be. But in all actuality, alcoholic drinks today are a little safer than they used to be. For example, the Sour Toe Cocktail. That's an alcoholic beverage with a toe in it. And once, it was a rite of passage. Mainly in Dawson City, Yukon, people used to take a shot of whiskey, usually Yukon Jack, with a mummified human toe inside of it. This all sounds pretty made up, doesn't it? But the truth is that it all started during Prohibition. Two brothers, Louis and Otto Lincoln, were caught in a blizzard. Louis had put his foot in a patch of ice and accidentally soaked it through. This isn't the best thing that you can do in a blizzard. It led to frostbite. His foot was frozen. Then after frostbite, there's something called gangrene, and this needed to be prevented. So, being the good brother that he was, Otto cut off Louis's toe, and then he placed it in a jar of alcohol to commemorate the event. It only gets weirder from there. Rumors had begun to swirl, and in 1973, Captain Dick Stevenson had found a jar, and of course the toe, in a remote cabin. This led to the creation of the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. You might have to guess what the prerequisite to getting into that club was, but we'll tell you anyway. The rules were that you needed to drink a cocktail with a mummified toe inside of it. The kicker is that your lips must touch the toe. Crazily enough, in 2013, a man had actually swallowed it on purpose. This didn't sit well with the town as it had become a tradition to have that and it seems to be where the sour toe cocktail stories cease. We're kind of happy about that. Oh, we forgot to tell you that nearly 100,000 people from all over the world had tasted sour toe cocktails. We don't think that we need to apologize that you didn't get a chance to do so. <laughs> Methane bubbles. It's all about the bubbles. At least that's how it is for Abraham Lake. 
you're around this lake, it's pretty stunning. And the winter is when this lake comes to life, and that's because its turquoise water freezes, and then that leads to it revealing thousands of white bubbles below its surface. It's a sight like nothing else. What you see below the surface is an icy spectacle of patterns and shapes. They don't move because they're frozen. It's like seeing bubbles frozen in midair. In addition to that, the bubbles are frozen within deep cracks inside inverted walls of ice. You'll also see some milky ribbons of snow in the glistening frozen water. Here's what causes these bubbles to form. They're actually caused by a rare phenomenon. It happens because of the common natural process of decomposition. What happens is that the frozen bubbles are caused when plants and trees' limbs on the bottom of the lake start to wither away. Methane gas is released, which creates the bubbles you see in the water. Then when the temperature drops in the winter months, these bubbles become frozen in the ice. The more that the lake begins to freeze, the more that these bubbles stack on top of each other. It creates what looks like a lava lamp that's frozen. So sure, there may not be any magic to this lake, but you won't find this site anywhere else. Halifax Ghost Window Over the years, we've seen many stories of people believing they see holy faces in things like bread and in pictures, but it's not every day that you see a ghost in a window. That's the case in one Halifax cathedral where people say that a decision haunts the oldest remaining Protestant cathedral in Canada. It's mainly a silhouette, and the province of Nova Scotia probably calls it the ghost window. This all dates back to a 1917 munitions ship explosion in Halifax. The tragedy led to many ghost stories sprouting up. One of them was the deacon in the window. Because at the time of the explosion, the deacon of St. Paul's Church has been said to be standing right in the midst of the explosion. He's been standing right in front of the window when the windows had been blown up. Well, not exactly blown in, but cracked enough to where the silhouette of his ghost had formed. Some even say that when the window was replaced, the silhouette comes right back. But this isn't anything to be scared of because people believe that the deacon is just watching over the town. See? Not all so bad. Snake Dens If you have a fear of snakes, then this next story isn't for you. But we'd love for you to stick around because we're about to talk about the largest single concentration of harmless garter snakes in the world. And it's right in Canada. At least the snakes are harmless. It's Canada's Narcy Snake Den that seeds tens of thousands of garter snakes arriving each year. Why are they coming? They arrive to sleep and mate. The sight is almost like looking at tangled Christmas tree lights. There were so many at one point that they were believed to be around 70,000 at a time. The only thing that curved its number was the terrible weather. It's in all the currents because in the early 2000s, the snake population was actually kind of low. Someone needed to act, so the Snake Pit's wildlife management area was established. They helped to create snake crossing tunnels that were created under the roads. This helped to protect them from cars and other natural occurrences in the wild. And the snake population came back way stronger than they had anticipated. So this is why there are so many snakes arriving all at once. You win some, you lose some. One thing's for sure, these snakes are here to stay. And so are their kids. Car Crash Hockey We love to be informative, but it's no news to anyone that traffic sucks. No matter what time of day, no matter what day it is, and no matter what time of year, traffic always sucks. It's especially hard to find anything to do while you're sitting there in your car waiting for everything to clear up ahead. But that's why Canada is great, because a few Canadians actually started a hockey game right on the highway. This happened because there was a massive pileup that took place on Highway 40 near Montreal. Everyone was waiting for the traffic to move, but it was a 75-car pileup so everyone knew that they weren't going to be moving anytime soon. There were people waiting for hours for the roads to clear up. It was the emergency crews that had to reopen everything. So instead of just sitting there and waiting, a couple of people got out and actually started having a hockey game on the road. Needless to say, hockey is a popular thing in Canada and a 75-car pileup could not stop them from playing. Luckily, the incident was captured on video. Can you figure out who won the game? Let us know in the comments. Face in the Cliffs 
We've already spoken about a deacon in a window as a ghost. Now let's move on to a face in a cliff. You heard that right. There is a mysterious large face on the cliffside of an island in the Pacific Rim National Park Reserve, and it was recently rediscovered by a man who had already been searching for it for years. Hank Gus, from an aboriginal group in the area, had heard about this years ago being on the rocks on Reeks Island, and he had been determined to set out and find it. And lucky for us, he did. And as you can see, the face, which is believed to be seven feet tall, looks a lot like a wooden carving on a door or something similar. It's an unexplained phenomenon that's chalked up to Mother Nature, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Bears in the Backyard This is definitely not Winnie the Pooh. There are bears in the backyard. Just looking at how these bears make themselves at home walking through the backyards in Canada. They're black bears to be more specific, but you can also see grizzly and black bears. It's a frightening sight to see if you're not expecting them to be in your backyard. When you're in Canada, this is all too common. There are plenty of tips on how you can stay safe around bears, but you should always stay calm and never try to be confrontational. It's just one of those things that makes Canada unique. We're sure that some of these bears like honey, just like Winnie the Pooh, but we probably won't try to find out. It's safe to say that Canada can be an interesting place. There are plenty of tourist attractions and a lot of history, and now we know there are also a lot of unsettling discoveries that, well, Canada can't really explain. But sometimes you don't always need an explanation. Sometimes things are just cool to look at and wonder about. Whether that be sour toe cocktails or faces on the side of a mountain, we're sure that there'll be plenty more discoveries in the future. <laughs> <laughs>